So great to have the opportunity to speak with you today, Harry. Thank you for this movie. And uh, well, um, how the more poignant it is uh, now, unfortunately, that um, Olympia has passed. So you're giving us a huge gift here. And it was just beautiful to watch this and to set to the footage and to have her so accessible. So I wanted to start by asking, um, I know this wasn't something like, hey, Olympia, I want to do this. Like, it took a long time to get her to, you know, to say, okay. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, you know, I, um, I never wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. You know, I, my plan was like, you know, narrative fiction. Yeah. Yeah, And um, there were certain things that happened in the world, like the financial collapse, which, um, you know, I was working for three years on my script, uh, finished the script, submitted it to the Cyprus Ministry of Culture for funding, and then the collapse happened. And so there was no money. And I was left feeling completely suffocating, like artistically, there was like, what am I going to do now? Mm. And, you know, I, I, I went to see the Carol Channing documentary at Tribeca Film Festival. So good, yeah. It's so good, right? And I was, and, and again, I, I don't think I had seen a lot of documentaries back then. Um, and so I was laughing and I was crying and I had, I, I had such an amazing experience watching this film um, that at the end I was like, and I had already known Olympia. I met Olympia, I had uh, invited her to come to Cyprus to do a workshop. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how we met. We stayed friends for a year. And, you know, after the film, I turned around to my husband and I said, well, why don't we, you know, somebody needs to do a documentary about Olympia. And he said, well, why don't you do it? You're a filmmaker. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my, my, my initial reaction was like, no, no, yeah. I can't. I can't do that. First of all, I don't even know what to do. You know, like, right. like where do you start? Yeah. Where do you start? Yeah. Um, but I I was going over my life and, you know, like I have nothing else to do right now after, after spending three years on this script. Um, I thought, you know what? It's not gonna cost me that much. I, I just need my cam. I have a camera, I have sound stuff. I'll just do it, you know, and okay. figure it out. So I found a friend of mine who did camera and I, I basically I did the direct. So it was a team of two. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, pitched it to her and she was like, no, you know, not interested. Right. She just didn't didn't want to do it, and and I kept trying to like find reasons why it was good for her. You know, I was, as we say nowadays, you know, uh, mansplaining. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. Mansplaining myself to her, like yeah. why she should be doing this, and she kept saying, no, 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 no. I'm not interested. I don't want a legacy film. I don't want. You know, I just don't care. Um, and then when I realized that it wasn't happening and it was, I was at her apartment when that happened and I said, okay, you know what, really like the only reason that I would want to do this is because if I do it, it means that I would get to spend a lot more time with you. And right. that's what I want. Right. And she got all emotional and she literally like just turned around and she said, um, okay. She said, I can do it for that reason. Amazing. Yeah. And then and then look what you got, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, there's, she's so beloved. She was so beloved and, and, you know, you never ever heard a bad word about her. You know, she was giving and such a great actress and, um, you know, people always say, oh, Moonstruck. I mean, she's so much more than Moonstruck, you know? Like she's done so many great things. So I wanted to know initially from you, what was the thing that maybe surprised you most about her when you started to spend so much time with her? I think her mind, I think her brain actually more than her mind, <laughs> like how, yeah. how intelligent she was, how um, constantly she was questioning existence and herself and everyone around her and everything around her and this and society and political stuff. Like her, she never, you know, she never stopped I mean, there's a great line in, in, in the film at the beginning where she says, you know, when she's drinking the, the foam from the coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she says, uh, I don't understand how people like this, uh, so much clutter around them. My mind has so much clutter inside. Like I need some yeah. tidiness uh, on the outside. So right. I think uh, her brain uh, and how this like 
wanted to live and wanted to live fully and wanted to explore everything, her curiosity and her vulnerability. Because mm -hmm. when I met her, of course, I was like starstruck, you know? Of course. And, I, and I thought, you know, how do you behave with someone who's like such a big uh, uh, star? Does that sound, do you hear that sound? Oh, it's fine, don't worry, it's okay. It's all good, it's all good, yeah. And um, so I, um, I basically, you know, when I met her, her being so easygoing and so uh, vulnerable at the same time, you know, like she didn't sit in her throne, you know, her Academy Award throne. Yeah, yeah. Life like a queen, she, she just was one of everyone, you know, one of us, you know, right. and um, I love that about her. And I saw her going into rehearsals and feeling insecure and, you know, afraid. And I thought, God, like, that's how you, that's how you create amazing characters. Mm -hmm. Because if you're, if you're standing way above everybody else, if you think that you're way above everyone else, you can't really get into the essence of things and, you know, and explore and, and push yourself to be better. So and true. She, yeah. You know? and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and finally her relationship, her relationship to her husband. Yeah. Which was so, um, so wonderful. You know, like, I, I don't know about your parents, but I know, you know, my parents and most parents that I know are so bitter with each other and are constantly fighting. They love each other, but you know, there's yeah. so much like baggage. Well, especially that, as they get older, you know? Exactly, exactly. Sure. Yeah. And this were like, you know, two people who've been together for 55 years working in the same industry. Yeah. You know, but amazing. Yeah. Just loved each other, made each other laugh every day, yeah. uh, gave each other space. There was so much respect. So it was a it, for me it was like, oh God, I wanna, I wanna study that and see what I can learn for my, you know, for my relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting too, because um, I just recently watched on Netflix, the remake, like the, of Tales of the City. And I, you know, so watching the original and remembering all that, and then seeing her like more recently playing this character, man, you know, and I, I was reading something where she said that was one of her absolute favorite roles you know yeah. and you could see the passion in that because she had a, a great love for the gay community and you could see that you know I mean I she's amazing she was amazing yeah. I would did you watch that performance did you enjoy that yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean I she says that it's her favorite part ever yeah. uh on a madrigal and um she I think the reason was that um the, you know, the, there was time to like develop the character, you know, as a season, you know, you have a lot of episodes. Exactly. She had a, yeah. And she had an amazing relationship with Alan Poole, uh, who was back then the producer. And then yeah. for, for Netflix, he was, I think, the exec. The... Yeah. So it's okay. It's okay. It's uh, new. You know, it's all good. <laughs> um, and Armistead Maupin. So the, she had like two people that she trusted so much. And then the directors that they brought in um that it um it pushed her yeah you know it really pushed her and and it did um create a you know she be she did become a, a you know a gay icon yeah. because of it and she has stayed a faithful ally to the, to the, you know the day she died um yeah, yeah. yeah. it's nice it was really nice to see i want to ask you about the uh, the trip to greece because, uh, you know, that also to, to go back to Greece and, and for her to, you know, do that, 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 wow, that must have been a huge gift for you. It was, it was, sorry, I'm just going to get my dogs out. Come on. Okay, that's okay. Uh, so um, th that was, my God, like, yes, it was not expected. And because I had stopped shooting, you know, I had shot her for two years. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm done. I just need to raise money now and start editing. And then she, you know, we figured out that trip. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be crazy, but uh, I think it's gonna be good. And it was a little, you know, we, the first place we visited was her mother's village. Yes. And there was 
I don't know, 10 houses there. We couldn't figure out, there was two villages. One was like with the same name. One was like upper, right. blah, blah. And then the other one was lower, blah, blah, in the mountains. And we couldn't figure out which one it was. We couldn't figure out the, what the house it was. There was no one there. There was no people. Wow. Um, yeah. And so it was like this really disappointing for me, at least for me. And I think for her too, because she sure. brought her you know, her kids and her grandkids. So she wanted to share that stuff with any, and it wasn't there. So our, the first experience was like disappointing. And then as we started, you know, traveling and doing more stuff, mm -hmm. things changed completely. And then on her father's village in Lesbos, which was just magical. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the turtle and the four women and yeah, and a lot of other things that we couldn't put in the film. No, we couldn't, but it just didn't fit. But it was, well, was time-wise cool. too, and yeah, you yeah, have to decide. Yeah. yeah, and when you have, when you're doing a documentary, you're saying like, you, I, I'm sure as a filmmaker, you learn so much, and you have to learn how to cut stuff out. That's got to be the hardest part because you've got so much great material to use. Yeah, it is. It is because there's some stuff that you know I absolutely loved and I fought for it, <laughs> but but at some point you have to cut you know, cut them yeah. out. Yeah, well, at least you, you know, like I say, you've given us this gift that we can remember her now. And and honestly, like, it's it's amazing, you know? And she she was a person who truly lived her life to the fullest. Did you find that when you were, when you got to know her? Yes. Um, yeah, there was not a moment where she sat and said, okay, now I'm comfortable, you know, let me just enjoy whatever. 89 <laughs> too, like amazing. Yeah. yeah no, it, I mean, she, you know, she, she passed away a month, a month and a half before her 90th. Yeah. Um, until COVID uh, hit, she was, you know, she did the Netflix series and she was teaching in her apartment. Like people would come to her apartment and take classes. Uh, so that's another, you know, that's inspirational. Like I want to, I want to be able to, you know, work till the day I die. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Like that's what keeps you young too, you know, but like you say, she has so much in her mind, but she just, yeah, she, she shared it was, that's yeah. amazing. So what's next from you? So how are you going to more documentaries now? This is something that you're, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <Good. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've already shot my second documentary and uh, which is about a, a gay couple in Dallas who, Texas, which uh, have been together for like 35 years yeah. uh, and problems with their relationship, very, you know, very artistic, very talented, very well, you know, one is a painter, the other one is an interior decorator. And um, it's kind of like a, a love story, like a you know, second chance in love, like, will they make it? Uh, oh, nice. And uh, I'm also producing an, an experimental documentary for another uh, filmmaker from Cyprus, which takes, it's, it's, it's about, I don't know if you, how much you know about Cyprus, but it's a, it's a divided country, uh -huh. uh, Turkey uh, invaded in 1974. Yes. So the director went in and filmed in all of Cyprus, kind of like trying to show that we're all the same people wow. yeah it's a beautifully it, there's no dialogue other than his subjects you know whatever they're they're talking, yeah. they're talking. oh beautiful oh I look yeah. forward to that too yeah. well that's that's amazing well thank you so much for your time i really really appreciate you uh, taking you some so time today time. to talk I about know, it and uh, Bonnie and was Bonnie was uh, Olympia's uh, personal assistant for 25 years like there I, was I did not know that <laughs> That's, that's good to know we got something in common but I, I it's a beautiful film and I, I I thank you personally for it because I just I loved watching it and uh you know I hope I will get it out there get more people to watch it because it's really uh, especially Canada because Canada was like her second I mean Tom yes. uh, Fitzgerald she did like three or four films with him yes she did television in Canada and Norman Jewison well you know. of course I mean Norman right. yeah I mean Moonstruck was yeah exactly that was that was her launching you know yeah. and, and what, did, uh, what did you think of the of the scene in uh, TIFF with, with when she's uh, talking to the uh, What's his name? Pierce. Uh, yeah, Pierce uh, had like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. She's she's yeah, totally amazing. I, you know, and I remember covering that movie like when it came out, and I'm like, yeah, well, doing this a long time. 
<laughs> I was I was there at TIFF, but yeah, I mean that that's a beautiful thing about TIFF is we we launch so many amazing careers and and films and they go on to oscars it's it's our legacy here we love it so you've got to bring more films to toronto what 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 i'm going to try and do is i'd like to have a retrospective on olympia um uh, where you know you see some of her you know movies that's a great idea yeah so yeah. we're going to go to tiff and we're going to talk to them hopefully you know they would be interested which i don't see why they wouldn't yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely well, if you need some help, give me a call and uh, I'll back you on that. I would love to oh, see you from here great. with that. That would, be, that would be great. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today, Harry. And uh, hopefully the borders were open and we'll get you back. We'll get you here in Toronto. Yeah. Thank you so much, Moni. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.